Make him rage quit, exit out the door. Yeah. Use his favorite team with a Baltimore. Huh? Don't get mad. Huh? It's just what it is. Yeah, we talking sports shot out the engraving bins. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And a very, very special video to me. Now, we're about a month removed from the NFL draft, and we know the Ravens had their handful of selections. Uh, but one of those selections occurred in the fifth round, where they took Ohio State cornerback Sean Wade. Now, Sean Wade is a slot corner, but he can play on the outside as well. He can do different things. Uh, but something that I really felt was an underrated part of his game, in my eyes, was his power, was his strength. When this dude blitzes and he hits, he hits. Uh, but anyway, he has a very, very interesting story. And who better to tell that story than somebody who has seen the story in its entirety? I had the privilege and the honor to be able to interview his father, uh, Randy. Uh, Randy was a very cool guy, and shout out to him. I appreciate him being willing to come on and just chop it up for a little bit. And this interview, for me, it really hit different, especially being a father and hearing another father talk about his son, uh, how proud he was of his son, but also at the same time, how hard he wants his son to continue to work. Uh, but he spoke about a lot of positive things that Sean and him are doing. Uh, and you know what? Without further ado, let's just get into it. Uh, so thank you again. Shout out to Randy for coming on. I hope you all enjoy uh, our little sit down. And team, keep it clean. This is uh this is Randy Wade. This is Sean Wade's father. And again, I appreciate you joining us, uh, especially so last minute too. So thank you for taking the time out of your schedule uh, to hop on and talk with us about your son. Um, I wanted to uh sort of start from the beginning. Um, when when did you how did how did he get started in football? How did he get started in football? Um, he started off overseas uh, playing um, flag football. I'm a, I'm military, retired military. So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so he started off overseas in Italy, and uh, that was his start. Man. Mm, okay, I didn't know that. And, and how did you um? How did y'all know like he had it? How did y'all know that he was gonna be something? Mm, that's a real, real good question. Um, <laughs> I, um, me being a coach now, I can see kids that that have it, but back mm -hmm. then I didn't know. So it was two coaches that uh, was in Jacksonville, Florida. We move uh kind of moved three to different places. We was in Italy, and then uh, my wife, she was uh, at uh, my grandma, Alabama, and uh, about ended up moving to Jacksonville, Florida. And two coaches kind of told me at a younger age that he was going to be special. Um, and I guess what they was talking about was just his attitude towards playing. This was actually in basketball. His attitude mm -hmm. towards playing and just his skill set. He had a really good uh, skill set in, in both sports. So uh, they kind of told me, and they, uh, every time they see me, from when he was a kid, they told me he was going to be special. Okay. And you so so you've been uh, sort of like a coach around him all his life. No, um, I actually do a podcast about that. Now I I made sure I coached him like like his first basketball experience in Jacksonville. After that, I uh, was just hands off, man. Because you know, parents we we do the double dip, man. Yeah. You coach a kid a lot of times. <laughs> we, we coach him on we coach him on the court, and then we coach him. In the car, you know what I'm saying? That's just too much for these kids. Man. Yeah. Too much. Too okay, much. so you, you try to create, like, sort of that uh that healthy balance to where you you his parent and you let the coaches do the coaching. Yeah, man. I, I try to tell people that all the time, man. Sean was a result of a lot of different adults that uh that disciplined him, that, that helped structure him. And uh, a, lot, a lot of parents got to just understand, man, you got to release your kid to a lot of different things so they can experience life, man. Sean had a really, really good sports life um, mm -hmm. all the way through. and uh, he, But he was disciplined and talked to by other people other than me, so that was pretty cool. Now, did, did you ever feel like there might have been a time where, because um, I know you said he was into basketball and football, did you ever think there might be a time where he may have, may have went the basketball route? Man, he was ranked in basketball really, really early, man. He was like, uh, I think at the age of like uh, 11 or 10, mm -hmm. he was like ranked the 30th player in the country, man. So like all these, all these cats in, in the NBA, man, he all, he played with all of them. He played with the top uh, eight, um, 90 team in the country, uh, each one teach one. It's, it's, I mean, so oh, so many he was like that then? He was like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> like, I, I got, I got, I got videos against him and so many players that's in the NBA right now, man. So we thought he was gonna go basketball, but the, uh -huh. what, what we think, what we think happened is, you know, we ended up going to a football uh, private school, 
and uh, he ended up getting a Utah offer, like really, really early. And uh, his football coaches were like, man, you can do that basketball all you want to, but them offers ain't going to come like that right now. You know what I'm saying? So he kind of made the decision because of the offers. But his love is definitely basketball. Oh, okay. Hey, that, that That's nice to know, man. So just in case uh, if he ever want to go one-on-one with Lamar, he might catch him. I'm slipping, man. Um, <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, you, you never, because you know, you know, they be playing basketball and stuff together. They be yeah, yeah. doing all type, all type of stuff together. So, yeah, man, yeah, you yeah. might catch somebody slipping. Yeah, for sure, for sure. He's pretty good. pretty good. That's cool, man. So he, yeah, he, he a jack of all trades. Then, all right. And um, how did he, uh, how did he get centered into playing cornerback? How did that happen? All right. So you know, that was another argument. His whole life, he played like running back, running back, wide receiver. And uh, when he got to uh, Trinity Christian in Jackson, Florida, uh, they had two coaches that was that was already in the NFL. One of them was in, in the, with the New York, New England Patriots. The other one was with the um, I forgot what team he was with. But uh, basically, they they were cornerbacks, and they they just they just made a cornerback uh, 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 field as far as getting kids D one in the college. Man, you know, you had Kevin Tolliver. You had a uh, um, uh, uh, array of cornerbacks that came out of Trinity Christian, man, and uh, that's what that's what they did. That's what they do. So uh, they would turn players and, and nice cornerbacks, and Sean was one of the players they mentored and turned turned that way. Okay, okay, well, yeah, it obviously worked out. And how was it with the uh, the jump to to Ohio State? How, how, how was that? How was that entire process? And not even for him, but how was it for you as a father? Oh, it was rough because you. I learn everything at the level that it's at. So, like, I'm just starting to really pay attention to the ins and outs of the NFL because mm-hmm. my son is there. And um, I pay attention to them. I got three kids. Whatever they at, I pay attention to that. I look at the national scale of it and stuff like that. So, going to Ohio State, what I had to do is I had to talk to a whole bunch of other parents. Right. Get the insight of, of what was the best for Sean, you know, and also keep communication with the coaches and just learn this whole process, man, because this thing, man, this thing we call uh, college football, man, is crazy, man, and yeah. stressful. It's it's make or break for these kids, man. But by them picking the wrong school, they can not go to the NFL, go to the NFL, they can graduate, not graduate. They can mm-hmm. do so many things. So you just got to be careful who you put your kids on. Yeah. So uh, it, was, it, was, it was really, really stressful for me being the fact that, People think it's it's not stressful because he had a chance to go to any school he wanted to, but it, that makes it even harder because you have to make the right decision. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? You have to make the right decision. So uh, it's different levels to that thing, but the level we was at, man, we had to really depend on other parents who've been through the process before, and that's what helped us out a lot. Oh, yeah. Talk to some people who had that experience, I guess. Now, um, mm-hmm. with uh, at Ohio State, um, take me back to – 2019, uh, the Fiesta Bowl, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, where it was third quarter. I think like a little less than five minutes left. No, not no second quarter. A little less than mm-hmm. five minutes left in the second quarter. Trevor Lawrence drops back. I think Ohio State was up like 16-0. Trevor Lawrence mm-hmm. dropped back. Your son went, blitzed him. He wrapped him up, was bringing him down, and Chase Young came to clean up. So everybody's hype. Everybody's all excited and whatnot. But then. They take him out the game. How was that for you, and how was that for him? That moment. Yeah, for me, for me, man, it was not as bad as bad as it was for him. Mm-hmm. Because uh, uh, let, I'll go how it was for him first. He he uh, he just felt like you know, it's nothing else he could have done on that play. He felt like he did everything he could. He just wanted his teammates to play as hard as they could to win that game and to sit back in that locker room by himself and watch the game unfold the way it did. Man, right. it just he just had to come back, man. He wanted some more of that, man. He just had to come back because we were really killing him. And uh, he felt like if he still would have been in the game, they would have won. And then for me, um, I, my family, and nobody knew what was going on. So we kind of just um, listened to the people that was behind us saying they about to kick him out of the game because it was so loud and so crunk at the time. We didn't know what was going on. So we really didn't see anything until we seen the replays on television because they didn't even replay it up top. And... Um, it was it was cool. It it was it was bad, but as a dad with your son in that moment, man, you just soak it all in. You know what I'm saying? My son, I mean, because you're not gonna win them all. You know what I'm saying? And the fact yeah. that my son was like a main part of this team that could have whooped Clemson's butt that year, and um, him not being there was affecting the team. As a dad, it just made me proud, man. 
You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. Yeah, it made me proud. Okay. And I mean, I, I'm sure you're pretty proud, especially being a father. And I know because my son, my son's only five, though. Uh, but mm -hmm. when he has those moments where you those those father moments where you like, oh, man, he got it. Like, I, I, I love this. And it really makes you like appreciate all the work that you put in to his entire life. Um, mm -hmm. How was it when he got that call on draft night a couple weeks ago? Because it's still kind of fresh weeks. almost. Uh, yeah, but how, how was that when he got that call? How was it for you? How did, how did that feel, like, especially after just all the years of work and just obviously that's your son, so you've seen him his entire life. You've seen the ups and the downs and just everything in between. How was that when he got that call when he officially became a Baltimore Raven? Um, it was mixed, man. It was mixed because of the stress of this whole season and how it affected him. Mm -hmm. And then the, the weight, man. Nobody talk about that weight. Bro. Well, I guess some people do talk about it. But uh, that wait to get your name called when you're expecting to be called a little bit early and stuff like that. Right. So it was mixed. It was mixed emotion. Once we once we got, got the call, you know, everybody celebrated, and I just kind of just sat back and just you know just looked at everything, man. Looked at everything that you know he's been through and how hard he worked to get to the point where he at, man, and kind of just soaked it in. Um, but I'm a I'm a really hard dad, man. I, I always think about the next step. So I celebrated, but I, I first thing I did was got on the um. Ravens uh website to see you know what the cornerbacks they had what position okay. they was playing the history of them so mm -hmm. I don't I'm I'm the kind of dad man he he does his thing but he gets you know uh mentoring and stuff from me so I look to the next thing you know what I'm saying I I look, I look to the next thing making a fifth three in roster finding out what position you're gonna play who are your coaches what's their background who do they know where do they come from I stuff like, like that. that so okay. so I go to the next level quick bro and then yeah. I I mean. I don't really set, totally celebrate. That's probably a problem, but I don't really totally celebrate ever. Like I just go to the next thing. What we going? What we what we got to do? You know what I'm saying? So I just want to help him out on the outside of things that he might not be looking at to help him with this upcoming uh, summer. Right, right, right. Okay, so you like okay? Let's get the business. Let's cut to the chase. Yeah. No beating yeah. around the bush. I'm, I'm straight with it, man. Okay. Yeah. I, I like yeah, that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's how I roll, man. That's how I roll, and, man. That's, then, kids, yeah, man. that's that's all important too. Um. That you said you, you did your research as well, man, about like the Ravens' history, uh, uh, about the coaching staff, and just everything when it comes to the cornerback position and their current their current uh, players as well, because they do have uh, some very high quality corners on the team right now. Um, they have a Marlon Humphrey, uh, they have a Marcus Peters, they got a Jimmy Smith, uh, a Tavon Young. Uh, though those are the the guys that are at the top right now. They've all certainly made a big impact on the league. Um, and then after that, um, there's some question marks here and there, but uh, he, he's going to have an opportunity, man. He's certainly going to have an opportunity um, to to make an impact right away. And I think um, it's probably going to start on special teams because uh, I know, especially with John Harbaugh, uh, with rookies, a lot of times he doesn't like throw them in the fire immediately, especially at the cornerback position. Uh, but with them having so much depth there, uh, I think it's going to start at special teams. And with uh, with your son, with Sean, it's going to be one of those things uh, where you just got to stay ready. So you ain't got to get ready because yes, at, at cornerback position, especially with the Ravens and, and, and having seen it so many times, mm. you could lose one guy and it will change everything like that, like quick. Um, and that's, in my opinion, that's probably the worst part of the game is injuries because you hate them and it's unfortunate for so many people, uh, but it has propelled a lot of careers because it's, it's next man up. Um, so at the cornerback position, he, yeah, he's just going to have to be ready, man, because his number could be called a lot sooner uh, than expected. Uh, and you like, just got to be ready for it, man. Yeah, man. I just, I think, I think the the biggest thing is his versatility, man. And I, I'm, I'm not saying that as his dad, even though I am his dad, man. But I think he's the most versatile. You can say what you want to him about how he played last year, all that stuff. But he's the most versatile corner in in, in the draft. Um, I think his IQ is really, really up there, and I think the coach is gonna definitely see that. I think that's what kind of sold uh, the Ravens on that. Uh, I know uh, we had some particular coaches that talked to the Ravens. We really didn't talk to them through the whole process at all either. Anyway, nah, he didn't. I, I, I didn't, of course. But uh, so we was kind of surprised about that. But uh, I just think his versatility is something that's going to carry him through. Um, and definitely you got to start off on special teams. I got another son that is his first year in college this year. And uh, 
he he wrecked havoc on special teams. So they told him, you know, at the end of the season, you know, they lost in the playoffs or whatever, and they told him at the end of the season, hey, next year we gotta get you on the field because he, hey, you just gotta do your job. You gotta do your job, and then when your time, like you said, when your time come, show up. You know, we are, he already knows that. He already knows that. Yeah, man. And uh, I I wonder if that's that's your answer to my next question. Well, what do you feel like is his best asset to what he brings to the team? What he brings to the Baltimore Ravens? Like I said, he 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 he's a plug and play man. I'm telling you, man, he can play all three. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't think he um he can play the outside. Mm-hmm. But the thing about it, the things he needs to fix is small things, man. You know what I'm saying? Being more patient on that line, not moving, letting that, letting that wide receiver just juke, whatever, jump up and down, do jumping jack, and count one one thousand before you move and get that hit off. You know what I'm saying? That's that's it's an easy fix. That's something that a, a senior cornerback can um help him get. You know those DB co- I mean the DB coaches and the defensive coordinators can help him get that. You know what I'm saying? A couple the injury thing. If the foot's good, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna see more of him jumping. Like he didn't do a lot of jumping last year, and uh, he was really just scared to hurt himself even more. Yeah. Last year, so like, like I just think that versatility and that IQ, man, is gonna just carry him a long, long way because he can be, he can be plugged and played, and he's gonna make a play in a game. He'll make mistakes, but he, yeah. he gonna, he gonna make a play. You won't see too many games where he don't make a play, man. So it's, it's, it's kind of good. I'm really, really excited. And then, like I said, it's just to have that monkey off your back, man. You know what I'm saying? Last year was so uh, uh, stressing. Getting getting the uh uh thing uh the, what is that the thing stuff you know every game I mean every day oh, the you know we gonna play we not gonna play moving to a new position uh worrying about well moving to this new position am I gonna do this am I gonna do that trying to win you know what I'm saying so he had a lot of stuff on his mind man but uh I'm just really excited because all that stuff is in the past now yeah. it's time to go out there and, and show yourself and, and do your thing oh yeah yeah he done made it now man. And uh, mm-hmm. it's like, it not not only did he make it, but again, with, with y'all being his family, you being his father, his mom, all his family, y'all made it too. Uh, because it, it takes a village. It certainly takes a oh, village. Because yeah. uh, like yeah. I said, my, my son, he's only five. Um, but mm-hmm. in, in just his five years alone, I done seen like, it, it takes a village. Mom yes. and dad, yes. super important, but having that input from everybody. Sometimes it's limited input here and there, but having that input from everybody, it all helps and it makes such a big difference, man. Yeah, it does, man. It does. Uh, he has a organization that he's going to bring up called One Village, and that's it's based off of that. It takes a village. We do a lot of community service down here in Jacksonville, Florida, man. Mm-hmm. And, uh, ho- hopefully he does some stuff up there. But uh, <clears throat> we know, man, it, it's just – Seeing a person like like before the draft, we went like all over Jacksonville to schools, to uh, juvenile detention centers, went to uh, a couple of pop Warner places with the little kids and stuff like that. And he just mm-hmm. talked to him and he told him he told him that man. We tried to tell the parents that at the same time, man. It's not just one person. It's not just it's not just luck too. It's um it's competency and it's it's repeating, it's consistency, all that kind yeah. of stuff, man. You got to go hard, man. At the end of the day, you got to believe in yourself and just go hard, man. And I'm, like I said, I'm just excited. Bro. Yeah, man. You should, you should be, man. And um, yeah, one of the one of the words that you just used, uh, consistency. Uh, consistency is everything in anything. Uh, if you're gonna be trying to be the best at something, if you're gonna try to be better at whatever it is that you're trying, it takes consistency. Cause then, and it takes not giving up too. Um, if you struggle with something and you try it for a little bit and you're like oh man i ain't never gonna get good at this so you know what i'm, I'm gonna move on to something else and you're never gonna get good at it but mm-hmm. if you keep trying no, no matter how hard it is and you put in that work like you said like you said y'all been doing hey mm-hmm. it's, the sky's the limit man the sky's the limit mm-hmm. straight up and it's nice to hear that um y'all went around duval and everything talking to people and talking to the youth because yeah that's super important too uh, because a lot of times, and and I like also that you said how you, uh, no matter when you get to a certain level, when he gets to a certain level, when y'all get to a certain level, you always looking ahead to see what's next, what he has to do, and you do your own research and everything too, uh, because that's that's super important, especially when it comes to the business side of this whole thing, uh, because mm-hmm. college is, and then now on the uh, the professional level, it is definitely a business. It's a real business. Uh, it's nasty a business. business. But it's a business, man. Um, yeah, man, so we had, definitely gotta stay on top of all of that. Yeah, we we had um like I said, we had one of the we had like twenty five people in a draft class of, at a small school that we went to that mm-hmm. uh uh were like had over like 
500, 600 offers between those people at, at our school. And uh, that was like the best, best Trinity class ever. And them bo those boys went to the league, and a lot of them are struggling, man. When they say three years, they mean three years, bro. Mm -hmm. The average NFL player career is three years. Mm -hmm. and so you got to be ready for that. You got to think outside the box. You got to understand that, like, you, you might not make it that far. So you got to plan your life after football, you know what I'm saying, while you're grinding yeah. on the football field. And so that's something we're working together to do. Yeah, that's true, man. Um, cause it, well, so what what did he study? I, I think I read that he studied um, NFL – what was it sports sports it's i think it's called sports industry it's okay, like everything to do yeah it's everything to do with sports from the from the medical side from the advertising side from the marketing side from the uh uh, uh being an asian all that kind of stuff you oh the whole night yeah i, I didn't was, like it at first i didn't uh, like it at first because i feel like all our athletes they they get general uh uh degrees when they should be using these schools for the hardest degree they can get because they get all the help they get. They get all the, they get all the attention and help they want. But uh, when I looked into it, I realized that, you know, sports is a business. And the fact that sports is a business is always going to be here. So he's always going to have a job. And he can use his image to help all that, you know, come across. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, now, and and to, to touch more on what, uh, what you all do, were doing in the community, um, how is mm -hmm. that? So the name of that project was called uh, Cleats on the Ground. Mm -hmm. So what we did, we did it for a couple of different reasons. What we did is we went to, we, we, we put a call out to, on, by, via Facebook to a whole bunch of different organizations and say, hey, who wanted Sean to come by and talk to the kids or talk to the adults or talk to anybody? Mm -hmm. And so uh, people put, put requests. And so we kind of just picked from a hat and kind of just picked don't know enough where he could be busy for a couple of days and it was, it was cleats on the ground it was five days we actually have it on youtube also what, what we did and so we just we scheduled that and it was mostly like three a day and so we went by and just kind of talked to different people and uh like i said kids adults all that kind of stuff just short space and the original purpose of that is uh when he's growing up in jacksonville jacksonville was really really good back then uh, you know, that was uh, around the time of uh, Marcus Brunel and oh, Fred Brunel. Taylor, stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. somewhere around that time, somewhere around the time period. But he was never able to see an athlete come to his area. We yeah. always had to go see them. He, he's met like numerous athletes or whatever, but he always met them at their camp. He always met them at their, you know, son something or whatever. So he was like, you know, what? I feel like it's bigger if you can come to their house, to their community. And show your face and show them that you care and show them that they can do it. And they can do it though, just don't mean athletics. They can do it means in the school, you know what I'm saying? Being a positive role model in the community, all that. And so that's that, that's what we preach. And we make sure we let them know that um, that one percent of people that go to the NFL, that's, that's probably not going to be you. You know what I'm saying? You, it's all right to have the dream, but it's probably not going to be you. So you're going to have to make a plan other than just going to the NFL. So we made right. sure we made sure we did that. Yeah, we made sure we did it. It was. It was really a good time and uh, we learned a lot you know what i'm saying we learned a lot about the community and when he come back and get everything set up we're gonna do some more yeah that's good and i, I do appreciate um that honesty too because it's uh the the truth it, it ain't always super smooth uh, it doesn't always feel good uh but people need to hear the truth and like you said that that one percent man it's it's tough it's tough tough tough, tough. Um, and even like you talked about too, NFL stands for not for long. That that three year <laughs> lifespan, that thing ain't no joke. Because even then, a lot of one or one percent, one percent of people make it, but then it's a lot of a lot of them don't last. And with the NFL too, it's this con constant turnover because you have guys that are already on a team. Uh, you have veteran players, you have free agency, then you have the draft, you have undrafted free agency, and you have so much turnover every year. So many guys coming in and so many guys going out. And the NFL, the, those business owners, the franchise owners, the GMs, the head coaches, they always looking for the next best thing at whatever position. So when it's your time, you got to be on point and you got to be with it. Uh, and like mm -hmm. you said, it's, it's, it's very smart to uh, to have these kids to teach them to have a backup plan just in case. Because like, like you said, try to go, reach for your dreams, try to aim for it, try to shoot for it. But at the same time, uh, you got to be realistic about the whole thing too and have that, that backup plan, that fallback option. Yeah. 
So I, that's I, I do like that y'all are uh, y'all are teaching them early. And, and again, sure. that's getting his name out there too uh, in the community and whatnot, getting his face familiar with the community over there in Duval and whatnot. So people know who he is. And, and it's, it's different when, um, it's different when you just hear about somebody preaching and teaching this and that, but when they actually come to you, come to mm -hmm. where you from and, and somebody that is an NFL player now, somebody that made mm -hmm. it to the NFL, somebody that was even on the way to the NFL, when they actually are reaching out to you. And like you said, they, he didn't have that opportunity where the players came to him. He had to go to where they were at. But now for mm -hmm. him to be like fixing what he did, for him to be given the opportunity that he didn't get, uh, that, that that's super special, man. So y'all y'all are on to something real good, man. Y'all getting this thing started the right way, man. So I, yes, I really appreciate that. Yes, yeah. Good, man. Yeah, so I, I, I appreciate you hopping on, man. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day uh, to come through <laughs> and for us to get to know your son and uh, for us to get to know you too. Um, you always more than welcome to come on, uh, chit chat. I'll let me, you got my number. Um, but yeah, man, I, I appreciate it a lot and I appreciate your time. All right, man. I appreciate it, man. I'm, I'll hit you up, man. And, uh, like I said, I'll be up there. I'm excited, bro. All right. Raven flock, baby. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it. You know, let's <laughs> right, get it, man. Know, man. I appreciate All right, man. Be good, man. All right. All right, you, too, All right. you too, man. Thank you. So again, huge shout out to Randy Way for being able to come on and chop it up with us for a little bit. Uh, and we all going to be rooting for Sean. You already know we're going to be rooting for him heavy. And he is in a very, very good situation because the Ravens, that is definitely one position. They got quite a few positions, but cornerback, that is definitely one position that they know how to develop and they know how to develop well. Uh, so we look forward to Sean Wade uh, and we look forward to his growth uh, as a person and as a player. And we definitely going to be rocking with him.